Hi, everybody. Uh, this is going to cover Chapter 8, the beginning of Chapter 8 uh, for Industrial Organization, uh, Econ 337. We're going to talk about market structure and how we measure it. And we're going to focus first on the concentration curve. So as we've talked about already this semester, we have really sort of four or five basic uh, market classifications, right? We have perfect competition where we have lots of firms. They all make the same kind of product. Uh, they have no pricing power, so they have a flat demand curve, um, and it's the most statically efficient type of market, right? Uh, on the other hand, we have monopolies, who are the only firm producing, and so they can choose the point on their demand curve that maximizes um, profit, so they'll set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Uh, it's statically inefficient and often uh, needs to be regulated if it's something like a natural monopoly or it's just illegal. Um, otherwise. A lot of our um, markets can sort of be described as monopolistic competition, um, although as we'll see sometimes things look like monopolistic competition that are really oligopoly. Uh, and so with monopolistic competition, firms do have some pricing power, um, but because there is free entry, uh, profits end up being zero, the same as with perfect competition, even though products are differentiated. And so what we're going to talk about mostly in, in this chapter and, frankly, in the rest of the semester is oligopoly, where we have a few uh, firms. And those firms have some market power, but they don't have complete market power like in a monopoly because there is some competition. Um, and so, you know, the one question is, is market structure stable over time? Sometimes it is, um, but, you know, technological change can definitely uh, alter markets. And sometimes as firms get bigger and bigger and bigger, they can get a cost advantage and put smaller co competitors out of business, right? So you think Walmart, um, you know, putting out a lot of business, a lot of mom and pop shops around the country. Um, we saw, you know, also the internationalization uh, of firms has led to both increased competition um, and larger firms as well, right? So, you know, GM, Ford and Chrysler, uh, had 90% of the U.S. car market in the 1950s, but that's fallen to, you know, 55% in, in the late 2000s. So one of the things we want to think about is how market structure is related to uh, efficiency and sort of social welfare, right? Um, static inefficiency rises with less competition. So, uh, you know, we, we saw that with perfect competition, there's no deadweight loss. And with monopoly, there is deadweight loss. And so we want to see if that uh, continues with oligopoly. Um, and we want to see, you know, whether our regulations, <coughs> excuse me, can imp improve social welfare um, and whether increasing competition will actually improve social welfare. And we'll see that different models of oligopoly um, have different results there. So just a reminder of our four main market structures. So as we said, perfect competition, we've got many producers, goods are homogenous, so they're all the same. Entry and exit are free, that's really important, right? We're gonna talk about uh, entry in this chapter. Um, and firms are price takers, so that they have a horizontal demand curve. They can produce as much as they want at the market price, um, but that market price is determined by market structure uh, forces. Monopoly, on the other hand, there's only one firm, right? So that's, you know, going from one extreme to the other. Um, entry barriers make it possible for there only to be one firm. That could be, it could be a natural monopoly if they have decreasing average cost. Um, and so then the firm is, is a price maker. They can't set, you know, any price and expect to produce any amount of output. Um, but they can choose the point on their demand curve where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost so that it maximizes their profit. Then monopolistic competition, right? It's a little bit of monopoly, a little bit of perfect competition. Entry is free and there are many competitors in the market, right? So that's like perfect competition, but there is product differentiation, which gives each firm a monopoly over the sale of its particular brand. And we said whether or not that's a good thing depends on whether or not the increase in variety compensates for the higher prices that consumers have to pay. And then finally, oligopoly, we're going to see we can have products that may or may not be differentiated, and they'll have slightly different uh, models and ways to think about it. Um, there will be some entry barriers, right? So maybe it's that there are only so many firms that can uh, operate profitably. Maybe there are legal barriers. Maybe there are market barriers. Um, and so we have a few firms 
that account for the bulk of industry production. So a lot of our models will have two firms because that's easier to model. But it could be, you know, in real life, it's going to be more like three, four, five, up to ten firms uh, in an oligopoly. And so the real difference in an oligopoly as opposed to all of these other markets is that the strategic interaction between firms is really important. And it's going to have uh, very important effects both for pricing decisions and output decisions, as well as things like advertising, um, pricing, market entry, all of these things. So this is just a table um, to summarize some of these things, uh, as we said before. Um, so a lot of, as I said, a lot of markets might look like um, monopolistic competition, but are really oligopolies. So if you think about the cereal market, we have lots and lots and lots of brands of cereal, right? Over 100 brands of cereal. And yet only five cereal companies account for 94% of cereal sales in 2008. Um, and so there's a lot of markets like this in the United States where we have lots of brands, lots of versions, product differentiation, but that they're actually controlled by oligopolies. And so we'll uh, see some of these in this chapter, but also sort of throughout the rest of the semester. So one thing we want to do is to be able to measure how concentrated um, an industry is, right? So if we think about monopoly on one end, where one firm controls all of the market, and perfect competition on the other end, where, you know, no one firm has any significant market share, there's a big range between those. And so we want to think about, all right, well, how concentrated is, is a market? And so we're going to have just a few hypothetical uh, industries here, A, B, and C, and think about how we might measure the concentration in those industries. So here we can see in industry A, firm one has 40% market share, firm two has 20% market share, and then the rest have 10 each. In firm B, the top uh, four firms each have 20% market share, and then the next four firms have only 5% market share. And then in firm, uh, mar industry C, we have 10 firms each with 10% market share. And so one of the things we want to do is like, how do we compare those three industries in terms of concentration? Um, and there's some numbers down here, um, but we will, we're will we going to focus first on the concentration curve. And so the concentration curve really just takes the biggest to the smallest firms and graphs cumulative market share, right? So you add up the market share, so it will always get to 100, um, starting with the biggest. And so you can see industry A is above industry B and they're both above industry C. So we would say, okay, industry A seems to be more concentrated, industry B less concentrated, and industry C the least concentrated of these three. So one, a few things to note, right? Like industry C, when they all have the same market share, we get a straight line. Uh, the curve shifts up with fewer competitors, and as firms, uh, larger firms have more market share, um, so A and B have fewer firms, they have higher concentration, so they're going to be above uh, industry C. Um, industry A starts at a higher point because their largest firm had 40% market share as opposed to 20% market share in industry B. And so the higher is the concentration curve, the more concentrated is the market. So that's good graphically. It's a nice thing to show. And if you have a bunch of industries and you can show the concentration curves, that's great. Um, what we're going to talk about in the next video is ways that we might want to uh, measure market concentration with um, a number.